It's Wednesday, which means our segment Rewind on Rewind, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. And I also like to call this thing the Feeling Old segment, where we look at the films that came out 10 years ago this week and 20 years ago this week. Let's start with the 10-year-old mark. These films turned 10 years old today. We've got Must Love Dogs, Sky High, and Stealth. 10 years ago, these films stood out. Mm -hmm. I'll start off with this. I thought Must Love Dogs was actually kind of cute. I, I, I thought that was a cute movie. Stealth? Stealth. This was the time when, oh, the dude from the, I'm forgetting the, the actor's name again. It is Josh Lucas. When Josh Lucas, <clears throat> it was looking like he was going to become a major A-list star at that time. You had Jamie Foxx, who nobody thought was going to be a major A-list star, and that those their roles clearly reversed. Horrible movie. <laughs> oh, my God, that movie was so... Well, it's directed by Rob Cohen, the guy who did Triple X. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize that. It, I, I remember when it came out, movie. I was like, this reminds me of that Clint Eastwood Firefox movie, but just not as good. Just, I, yo, minus the good. Yeah, like, no, I didn't even see Stealth. I just remember right. seeing the trailer. I was like, not seeing it. I already saw a better version of it called Firefox. So. And then uh, Sky High, which I kind of dug to me. You got Kurt Russell as an old superhero, uh, high school for superheroes. And what was really cool was... Linda Carter, I believe. This is one where Linda Carter yeah. uh, was special guested in it as the principal of the superhero school. And I actually thought it was a pretty cute little movie. Not good enough to franchise it, but I thought it was pretty cute. So anyway, on the 10-year mark, what should these films stand to I love Sky High. I thought it was a fantastic film. It was really fun. It was like all the kids whose parents are superheroes or the kids who have superpowers, they go to this special you know, high school in the sky. And it was a really fun look at you know being super powered but in high school I, I i especially remember like taylor kitsch that was i think his first role and he was like the guy who had <laughs> flames he was like pyro or something like that so. i loved i loved kurt russell's superhero name too his real name was steve stronghold and his superhero name was the commander <laughs> which <I'm>, anyway <laughs> what, any of these movies stood out to you look you guys know that i'm nothing if not brutally honest at all times and i'll tell you this combine all these movies and i've seen 45 minutes of their footage i <laughs> i never saw stealth i took a big pass on that sky Good high for you. Until about two minutes ago, I thought it was the movie with Method Man and Red Man when they go to college. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's what I thought we were going to see. And I saw this other, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that movie happened, too. Must Love Dogs is a film that I was looking forward to. Single, chubby, rom-com loving Mark Ellis like Must Love Dogs. That's going to be like a combination of serendipity with a little bit of Air Bud thrown in. And I fell asleep watching it. Wow. I don't remember the ending of Must Love Dogs. I don't know if they got <laughs> together at the end, but I, 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 I want the best for Diane Lane and John Cusack. God love you guys and all your puppies. All right, let's move on now to the films that are even older, celebrating their 20th anniversary, their 20th birthday this week. And we've got The Net, Operation Dumbo Drop, and Waterworld. It is weird to think that 20 years ago, they're making a movie like The Net that it was a little bit ahead of its time because they're making movies like The Net today about somebody can break in and get your... What was that one with Chris Hemsworth? That's right, Black Hat. Mm. Black Hat. I mean, it's so it's the same themes, very different right. films. But, you know, somebody can go in and erase your identity in the digital age, blah, blah, blah. That was 20 years ago, and we're still making the same movies. I have to admit, I never saw Operation Dumbo Drop. What? I didn't feel culturally compelled <laughs> to go and watch it. And then there was Waterworld, which is kind of triumphant. It was like Hollywood. It was Kevin Costner's Big nosedive after Dances with Wolves that, you know, one of the biggest flops of all time. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't mind Waterworld. I watched, I thought it, I thought it was an okay movie. I liked Waterworld, basically. It's certainly not an all-time great. But anyway, Mark, you're looking at the movies that now turn 20. Yeah. First of all, can you believe these movies are 20 years old? And what stands out to you? I remember going to see The Net and just being so in love with Sandra Bullock. And when you watch The Net today, it is one of the most fun, dated times of the movies you'll ever have because they're using floppy disks. And it's just right. it's it, it's just such a it's such a nice time capsule, like a War Games was for the 80s. But it's still an enjoyable ride and fun little performance by Dennis Miller in the net 
check that one out. Waterworld is the one that stands out to me, though. When I was a kid, I remember reading about Waterworld and all these problems on set. Huge Kevin Costner fan. He was so good as Robin Hood. I can't wait to see this movie, but it has all these delays and all these issues, and it's the highest budget ever. Then I saw a commercial for it on TV a couple weeks before it came out, and I'm like, that actually looks like a cool action movie. And I saw it, and I thought it was a pretty cool action movie. So it's just one of those lessons that you just take all the noise that you hear from press and all these different things. Just go see the movie and judge the movie on its own merits. Is it great? No, it's not. Well, here's the funny thing, too, about Waterworld is that, you know, today we're like $150 million for a Gambit movie. Come on. This was 20 years ago. It was the most expensive film in history ever made at the time, $175 million budget 20 years ago. Right. Like, imagine how that made some studio heads explode. And I mean, that's, that's crazy. The re that's the movie that everybody was citing when they said, oh, no, James Cameron's Titanic is just going to be another the water, water world, world because it costs so much money. It's on the water, and it's hard to shoot, and then look what happened. Yeah, for me, my memory is like I remember I was working in Atlanta, Georgia on a Space Ghost episode. And I remember biking to go see Waterworld. No one wanted to see it. <laughs> I went and saw it. And I was, you know, it was a, it had all of this like, it's going to suck, this and that. Like before it ever even came out, before it was ever reviewed, people were like, nah, it's going to be horrible. And I remember seeing it. And then all my friends that I was working with were like, so what do you think? I was like, that eh, didn't suck. Because yeah. it didn't suck. It was fun. It's like the only film that has the main hero, he can drink his own piss. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, aside from Dune, where they're wearing the still suits, that's just a, a survival type thing. This guy actually like has a little shaky can, like pees in it, and then drinks it, drinks his own pee. Bruce Willis will do that in Die Hard 6. That's going to happen. That has to happen. <laughs>